Okay, so this next video is a martial art video, and the one thing you need to know, first off, adaptation is life in martial arts. You have to be able to adapt in everything, all right? So I'm going to put some stands up here, some different martial arts stands. I know you guys can't respond. I tried to get my brother Mills on here, and that didn't work, and also thank him for his service, people. Real soldier. Thank him for his damn service. Thank all soldiers for the service, but either way. Thank every soldier did you meet for the service. So, when I when I line up these styles, you know, I'm going to tell you that if you don't adapt to these styles, you will be destroyed by these styles, all right? So I'm going to try to keep it in a martial art frame of mind. I'm not going to go too into shit that I don't know, but I am going to go into straight facts and what I have used to work against people who have used styles against me, all right? So if that doesn't make sense... Just brace yourself and enjoy the fucking ride. All right. So, if you haven't had kickboxing, but you've had tie fighting, then you know this stance right here. So, tie fighters, their strongest weapons, knees, forearms, elbows. So, if they come at you this way, probably one of their standard kicks is going to be one of these. All right. Looks kind of funky. My advice to you is to not absorb that kick. Get the hell out of the way. Sidestep counter. You know, if you don't know kickboxing or if you don't know tie fighting, then you stick with what you know, which is basic shit. When they throw this kick, you know, their guard comes down right about there. You sidestep, boom, you know, you got them. And when you hit them, hit them with the fist and catch them with the elbow. Because that way, you know you're going to at least sting them enough to get them the hell out of the way. And if they're still in this position, boom, you know, kick them the fuck away from you. And when you kick them, you want to kick them down the side. And if you get nothing but back, then kick them in the damn back. As I told you before in the other two videos, your fight is going to adapt and it's going to change. And your primary targets are never where they're supposed to be when the fight starts. All right? Once the fight's in motion, you just have to go with it. So, that was for tie fighting. If you're a kickboxer, you pretty much know the same shit. It's just not as rugged as tie fighting so you can still use kickboxing i cannot guarantee you a win you just got to be good at your shit which means your ass better adapt to block all the shit that they're going to be throwing a lot of tie fighters are knees and forearms elbows so boom you know if they get you in a headlock mm, 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 your only basic options is to block but while you're blocking and they got you in the back of the top of your head Use one arm to block, because you have your arm is long enough to block both of their legs. See how long that is? Now, you can block this shit, sweep a foot, punch them in the gut while you're blocking. You know, it's like boom, boom. Just strike them. You're, they already got you down here, so just hit them in the gut. You know, hit them in the gut. Push them off. You know, a palm strike. Do something to get them the fuck off you. If you push them off right and they lose their breath, just come straight up. You should have them. Hence for adaptation. Alright, so a lot of you guys love capoeira. So here's capoeira, your jinga. So modify it. Because I'm small and I have a hip replacement. Here's your wheel kick. A lot of things can go wrong with that fucking wheel kick. It's going to come fast and furious, and if you get connected, sleepy sleep time. So, best thing to do when somebody's fighting capoeira, especially if you don't know capoeira, <laughs> what martial art do you know? So, a good one to combat capoeira, and I say this to everyone, it's Drunken Master. You don't have to agree with me. You don't have to believe me. That's your choice. I'm not here to make you believe in anything. I'm here to teach you a lesson. I've learned that in dealing with people who do capoeira, it's not too far away from drunken master. All right? My hips don't work like they used to. So their jinga, you can match it with your sway. Now, a lot of capoeira people do this cartwheel hand kick thing. I'm going to attempt to demonstrate it. It's probably going to look fucked up, and it's probably going to be an epic fail. But basically what they do is they put this hand down and they come up like that, 
right? They have more upper body strength, so they'll hold it and kick over their head. Your axe block and strike, yeah, so here and here for karate, for kung fu, you can X block and throw the foot at the same time, or you can be straight ghetto with the shit. When you block it, you can gung fu kick them in the face or a low wind chung kick because they're on their hand. They're on one hand. So you can be really dirty, block and sweep the damn arm from under them so that they go face down. Or depending on how close their face is to your foot when you're blocking, you kick them in the face. You know? Being kicked in the face hurts, by the way. Just in case anyone here has never been kicked in the fucking face. It hurts. A lot. So don't get kicked in the face. Getting hit in the face hurts. A lot. So they're doing capoeira. And they... One of those on you. A sidestep is great. You can always sidestep. You can sidestep anything. You know. Just make sure you put your windshield wipers on. You know. Karate kid. Windshield wiper. Wax on. Wax off. That shit. You know. Put your windshield wipers on. Foom. Foom. Now, the thing with capoeira, that was way too slow. Understand that. Capoeira is not a slow martial art. It is a fast-paced martial art. And if you don't get out of the way or if your ass isn't strong enough to block, you're going to sleep. I like to keep shit real with you, so I'm going to keep it real with you. Um, another good way of combating capoeira, because capoeira has a lot of aerial shit, traditional wushu. There's flying in that, too. I am not allowed to do wushu because it is hip replacement. But, you know, when capoeira guys start building up momentum, that's when they're the most dangerous to you and themselves. So you need to be able to get out of the way. If they're coming at you with like a cartwheel attack and you can block and knee their shit, do that. The most important thing that you have to understand is that you need to follow your fucking gut in a fight. Don't second guess yourself because you might not get a chance to get a third guess. It's hard to guess when your ass is stretched. All right, so you got capoeira, you got drunken master. Now let's go into combating each other in just kung fu animal styles. So the three animal styles we're gonna work with: the snake, because the mouth is open; the crane, because the beak is not; and the mantis. Got all that? All right. So those three specifically relate a lot in movement, especially the snake and the crane, all right? Had to make sure I put that right. Snake, see the hand, it's got the opening. Some of them is this way. See how my hand is? Some is this way. So you block, you strike, you block, you strike. Same thing with crane, see the hand. Thumb up beside index for crane. Thumb down for a snake. Snake has mouth. Crane has beak. Snake has fangs. There you go. So, for a crane, you probably can't see from there, but the thumb's back where it belongs. For the crane, you know, the crane, strike, strike. Snake, same thing. There, there. But the snake, you have one here, and you have one here where you have the tail. So there's two different types of snakes. Understand that. Some people, I don't do this one with the tail, I think it looks fucking ridiculous. There may be something to it, but to me, this looks ridiculous. Alright, see, I'm supposed to be moving the tail, but I don't know that snake. I know this snake, because this snake can lead to two snakes. Understand? Where this is a tail, and that's all confusing to me. I have a snake, and now the snake has two heads. Okay? And you can't do um, ghost trails on live TV just in case anybody thinks this is fake. I am just that fast. All right. So, now, the thing with the snake is that when it combats against the crane, you can start a crane from the butterfly position. See there? Yes, there is a butterfly technique. Do not ask me. I know there was a Chinese movie about it. That's as far as I got on research. So it's like Iron Butterfly. That's your palm strike. But somehow or another, you keep the butterfly. Squash that shit. Snake. Mouth open. Crane. 
Just the beak. Beak, beak, fangs, fangs. Understand how that works? So, let's say you're going against a guy doing mantis. So, his movements, because the mantis has two claws, are very similar to the snake. Some mantis teach you to start here, and then you go here, and then here, and then here, and then you start your strikes and your kicks. So, foom, 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 foom. In case you haven't noticed, most martial art kicks are all the same in most martial arts. Rather you choose to believe it or not, it's a different ball game. All right, so here's your rough ass example. No matter what style of martial arts you're in, this is an outside to inside crescent kick. Boom. Tie fighters use that a lot. Same thing, this leg. See my guards. Always have your guards. Inside to outside crescent kick. Got that? Jumping front kick. Straight front kick. Jumping front kick. Straight front kick. Notice where my guards are. Spinning back kick. Spinning back kick. Alright. Spinning hook kick. That's where your leg's more hooked. It'll look a little messed up on this one because this leg doesn't work right. See, no balance with that. Bottom line is all the kicks have different names, but the same. Here's where names get complicated. Hurricane kick. That's what it's called in Kempo. Tornado kick. That's what it's called in Taekwondo and Wushu. So why do they have different names? Fucking A, I don't know what the hell I just did there. They have different names because they have different styles, but the kicks are exactly the same. This is a conundrum because no matter what style, style, whatever skill level you are and whatever style you choose to take, all of these martial arts have these kicks in them. Every fucking one of them. Now some of them are as um, set. Judo, you don't really use that many kicks. Judo is mostly throwing and grappling. Where jujitsu, it's kind of like judo, and there's also kicks. All right? It just depends on who's teaching you what style of jujitsu. Yes, there is more than one style of jujitsu. There are also many variations of Brazilian jujitsu. Just because the name jujitsu is on the style doesn't mean you're going to get bona fide original jujitsu. So let me explain how that works before I end this video. For Kung Fu Havoc number two, that is. So, um, let's say I started martial arts when I was seven, which is a true fact. So every teacher that I've been through has taught me their style of martial arts. Now it becomes my style. So now it's no longer their style, it's what I teach you. Now what you go out and learn and you practice and do becomes your style. So when you teach it to someone else, everything I taught you you evolve, you adapt, and you make it your style. And then you teach it to someone else. As it goes on through other people, it progresses and it becomes so far off from what it initially started as, okay? So in Wen Chun or Wushu or Gung Fu, if I'm teaching you low level kicks only, which means everything is below the knee, all right? This is generally Wen Chun. So, if I'm teaching you low-level kicks, I'm teaching you how to kick in the shins. If you are fighting a person who is actually a real TIE fighter, who has taken that eight-hour beating a day so that their skin is tough as hell, the kick to the shin ain't doing you no good, you know, because their shin is like fucking metal. So the only thing I can tell you fighting a TIE fighter is to be honest, you got to go for their weapons, their elbows and their knees, because they are their weapons, but they're also their weakness. Something you don't know. Now you do. I forgot to stop the goddamn video, by the way. 